Let's take a look at a faulty anchor power supply. This unit was given to me by a friend called June. And when you push the button on the side, the first LED, I don't even know if you'll see, it's very dim, but the first LED starts flashing. And when you plug it into charge, it looks as though it's charging. The LED lights up, starts flashing, and it draws about an amp. But after a while, it's really warm at this end. And you can see with the thermal imaging camera, you can see the outline of six 18 to 650 cells in here. But it is just getting hot and it's not actually putting a charge into it. So let's see if we can get this open. This is the scary bit of trying to open something with lithium cells in it. Will it open? Not sure the best way to start here. These cases are normally put together very, very tightly. And whatever I do here, it's going to be very chewy. And I definitely don't want to stab the lithium cells. I know you guys do want me to stab the lithium cells because it makes it more exciting. And once we're inside, we can take a look and see if we can find which component's getting hot with a thermal imaging camera again. Because that's a, a very useful tool. This is not kind of part. It is a super tight case. It's one of these ones that's been engineered so that when they clip it together, it goes together really tightly and uh, it's very hard to get apart. I may have to pause. I probably will have to pause. Yeah, I'm going to have to pause because this is just not going to be fun. Right. Okay. One moment, please. So it was very difficult to open. Extremely tight clips all along the edge. And I had to use uh, pipe grips to actually get it open the end. And now it's open, it appears to be now taking a charge. It's interesting to note that there are two clusters of three 18650 cells. And they're actually wired in series for about, say, 7 to 8 volts, roughly. Um, but look at the circuitry here, provisionally. It looks like they've used individual cell protection chips for for each cluster with a sort of midpoint tap. Um, also, when I unplug this, and then I press the little button on the side, it does actually activate now and put the output on. Intriguing. righty -o. Well, I'm going to take the circuit board out of this, and we'll take a closer look at that and see if there's anything interesting on it. One moment, please. And continue. Now I'm actually awake, because I was so tired yesterday when I started making this video. So I've taken these two sections of cells out, and they were in series and I'll reuse these. The circuit board is ridiculously complex. I took the capacitors off so we could see what was underneath, tried to remove as much of the silicone compound as possible and let me show you the circuit boards. Now it's possible I may have reset this power bank accidentally. Not sure. I may have bridged something in the circuit board while I was trying to get it out. Um, but let's uh, zoom down this. But it's also possible because there are many ways to reset anchor power banks, so I didn't know this. It's possible that just by holding the button in on the side, as I was trying to get it open, holding it in for a long time may have actually forced a reset. But there's other power banks, versions of the anchor, that have a little hidden reset hole, usually bigger ones, and other ones that you connect a USB lead between the two output ports on it, like the input and the output, and it can somehow detect that, and if, if it's in a sort of locked state, it can actually reboot it. Interesting to know. Anyway, initially it doesn't look too complicated, does it? Let me make sure I am focused down under here. I am. Initially, there's the little boost circuit, there's the protection circuit, there is the uh, output circuit, the uh, buck regulator in this instance, to provide 5 volts from the higher voltage across the cells. Because the cells, because there are two in series, you'll get a voltage range from about 6 volts up to about 8 volts across these. I thought, well, that's fairly straightforward. And then I turned the circuit board over. I thought it was extremely simple. And then, no, it's really not simple. And there's something very, very weird about this. There is a microcontroller. That's a bit that is likely to crash and give problems. And that's a bit that needs reset if this happens to you. Um, OK, let's start with this conundrum, because it is a conundrum. Because it's 5 volts coming in here, let's just say... 5 volts in on that little micro USB port. It has to get boosted up by this inductor. And the inductor is switched to the, uh, from the positive rail, it's switched to the negative rail briefly and pulses by 
These MOSFETs here, they're all common together. Two individual MOSFETs and then a dual package. Not sure why. Is something weird going on? And that basically builds up magnetic field in this inductor. Then they turn off and the charge, the field collapses and the elevated voltage goes through this diode. And there's a couple of capacitors here, but then it goes to the positive of the lithium battery pack. The lithium battery pack is protected by this dedicated chip. Let me see if I can find a data sheet for it. Here is the data sheet for that chip. It is just designed for two cells, individual monitoring networks, and uh, then it controls the MOSFETs that switch the output. There is the monitoring chip. There are the two little filter networks. There are the two dual MOSFETs that actually switch the negative rail to actually break the circuit if the cell is potentially being over, the battery is either being overcharged or over discharged. And as soon as one of those clusters of cells reaches down to say about three volts, that will shut off. Or if it reaches eight volts, it'll also shut off. Well, 8.4 or just a bit over. However, the complexity here is that I was expecting it to be a, a little standard bush chip, but there's not. Um, if we take a look at the back of this circuit board, there's this is the micro USB port area here when it's flipped over. It's got loads of discrete transistors and it honestly looks as though they've made a discrete uh, boost circuit, a discrete boost regulator. There is a current sent resistor. The microcontroller is probably using that to monitor current in from there. Um, and it may, I'm not really sure what it's doing. It, the microcontroller might be controlling these, but there's no dedicated chip that I can see for the boost. Just that discrete circuitry there and then the MOSFETs that are actually switching the inductor. Strange. So it charges the battery up, and then on the output side of things, we have a buck converter, and then each of these outputs, these are the two output sockets, has a MOSFET that can switch the output, and it's got a um, control chip. And it's using these as two current sense resistors, presumably. So what that does is it communicates with whatever device is plugged in to determine that it is a, like an iPhone or an Android or something. And then it controls this MOSFET and also prevents the output from being short-circuited. So that's just basically two completely separate uh, control systems for the output. It may also signal back to the, um, the microcontroller, presumably does. Then we have... A MOSFET in this side, and we have a tech code TD1720. Let me show you that. I found the data sheet. The tech code TD1720 is a what they call a synchronous buck converter. It takes a higher voltage in. In this example, they're showing 12 volts and an output of 1.2 volts. In reality, in this case, it's going to be between 6 and 8 volts up here. Let's just write that. 6 to 8 volts. And the output here is going to be 5 volts. And it is rated for quite a high current. That's what this unit is for. It's got a whopping great big inductor. And the way the buck converter works, this MOSFET turns on, current flows down and is impeded by the inductor, but it goes through the inductor um, it, do it doesn't just whap current through. The, cur the inductor will actually ration the current through as the magnetic field builds up in it. And then this MOSFET turns off. And normally you just have a diode going to the uh, negative rail, a freewheel diode. But in this instance, as the magnetic field collapses, this MOSFET turns on. And it captures that energy and diverts it to the negative side of the capacitor that's feeding the output. So these these uh, MOSFETs are basically alternating on and off and the magnetic field in this inductor is being built up and collapsed and uh, puts the, out the 5 volts out. Uh, there is a feedback based on these two resistors here and that's used to uh, sense the output voltage. I'm guessing that when it's in use it may actually turn these off in some way because that would be a parasitic current drain otherwise. But uh, by choosing the value of these resistors, a little bit of filtering there as well, you can determine that it's going to be a 5 volt output. Um, not sure what comp is. 
that might, may just actually be a control for that, or is it com comparator? I'm not sure. But it looks as though it may be a control circuit for it. Certainly when it says on-off in the schematic there. Uh, but there is one of the MOSFETs that is doing that uh, switching, control under control that chip, and the other MOSFET is on the other side of the circuit board, uh, which I've just put over there. Whoops. There is the other MOSFET. These, when it's flipped over, are just basically back to back. Um, one uh, switching to the uh, inductor and the other then switching the inductor to the zero volt rail. But that is the big beefy inductor here. I think this one is purely for filtering, for ex extra filtering for output noise prevention. But that is it. I mean, I say that's it. I'm not going to draw the full schematic of this because it's like multiple sections. And to be honest, the bit that's put me off most is this splodge of components here and here because it does look like that discrete um, synchronous, rect uh, synchronous rectifier. It's not a synchronous rectifier boost circuit, but that may be controlled by the microcontroller itself, but it does look possible as if it just self-runs, powered by the 5-volt in, uh, just to basically just launch the circuit into action. Very odd. I didn't get all the silicone off. Um, I scrubbed it off wherever I could, but uh, the silicone that was holding all the capacitors in position and uh, other components like that and inductors was quite messy and sticky. It's very hard to get it off cleanly. But that is it. I think the biggest takeaway from this is that Anker power banks do actually have reset functionality. So I wonder what the... I wonder what happens to this. Now, one possible way you could have forced a reset is to basically let it drain right down to zero, and you could have helped that by plugging a USB load in because it would still current... Oh no, because that MOSFET would not potentially allow current to flow while that was off. Not sure. But you could just leave it for ages uh, until the batteries literally went down to the point that these protection MOSFETs cut off. Um, and at that point, the process would hopefully reset, but maybe, maybe I shunted something, uh, maybe it was just basically me gripping the case tightly and pushing that button in that actually for, had a software routine, the microcontroller, that forced a reset. I suppose there's only one way to find out, and that is to try it if you have a, a locked-up Anker power bank. And the other approach, as I mentioned earlier, is just to get a USB lead if you've got the two output types. Or you've got USB-C charging and you've got an output. Look it up. Look up your model number and reset, and you may just find that connecting a lead between those two positions will actually force it to do a reset. But that's useful to know. And now, to uh, repurpose these cells into useful clusters of lithium cells, um, which is a good result in its own right. It was quite educational. Sorry I didn't do the full reverse engineering. It was just going to be just too time-consuming complex, particularly in such a densely packed circuit board with weird circuitry. But um, well worth just taking a look at and seeing it from a modular aspect anyway. <laughs>